Hi, my name is Kevin Hobby, and for the next five minutes I'll be discussing our recent paper entitled Inharmonic Strings and the Hyperpiano. This paper, written by Bill Satheris and I, describes a design procedure for musical instruments using strings with thickness that varies along the length of the string. Detailed simulations of the strings are combined with a measure of sensory dissonance, or roughness, to help locate interesting and feasible string designs. A particularly intriguing variation is a string that consists of three segments, two equal unwound segments surrounding a thicker wound portion. The corresponding musical scale, built on the twelfth root of four, is called the hyperoctave. We modified a standard piano to play in this tuning using these inharmonic strings. The instrument is called the hyperpiano. And as you can hear, the hyperpiano does not sound like an ordinary piano. Many musical instruments, including those that create sound from strings, such as the piano and the guitar, and those that make sound using an air column, such as the saxophone and the flute, create sound based on the harmonic series, which is a collection of overtones in a simple pattern. For example, an A note on a standard piano may sound like a single tone, but its spectrum is actually made up of a collection of harmonically related overtones. In this case, twice the fundamental at 880 Hz, three times at 1320 Hz, four times at 1760, and etc. Building on the observation of Hermann von Helmholtz that the perceptions of musical consonants and dissonance are related to the structure of the overtones, the harmonic series can be related to the tuning of musical instruments via dissonance curves, whose construction is reviewed in an early section of this paper. This picture draws the dissonance curve for a sound with harmonic overtones, and the locations of the minima of the curve occur near many of the most important consonant intervals, as shown on the piano keyboard. Harmonic sounds are generated by uniform one-dimensional vibrating systems, like uniform strings and air columns. This is illustrated in the top pictures. But when the string is non-uniform, that is, when the thickness and or density of the string changes over the length of the string, then the overtones occur in an inharmonic relation. For example, in the bottom illustration, the overtone at 332 Hz is not twice the frequency of the fundamental at 185 Hz. Now, the central issue of our paper is this. How can we design interesting sounding strings, and how should these strings be tuned in the context of a musical instrument? Perhaps the easiest way to manufacture non-uniform strings is to exploit the structure of common wound strings, which consist of an inner core and a winding around that core. In order to achieve a non-uniform density distribution, portions of the wrap wire must be manually unwound by hand. Using software that we designed based on computational techniques from the literature, we predict the inharmonic overtone structure of the non-uniform strings. Using dissonance curves, we can visualize many possible designs and choose ones that appear promising. We looked at and listened to many possibilities, and ultimately picked one that generates a dissonance curve that has the same basic shape as the dissonance curve for the harmonic string, only it is stretched out like the bellows of an accordion to be twice as wide. And since the fundamental unit of repetition in the harmonic dissonance curve is the octave, the fundamental unit of repetition in our stretched out version is the double octave. Therefore, we call the resulting scale, based on our inharmonic string, the hyperoctave scale. You can download the software from the paper's website. We tested the specific inharmonic string we chose, that is, with particular proportions of wound to unwound segments, using a monochord. The predicted spectrum and the sounding spectrum were nearly identical. We then built the hyperpiano by repurposing a standard piano. Here you can see the details of the strings mounted on the frame of the instrument. Here you can see the keyboard of the hyperpiano. And in closing, here's a brief succession of melodic runs showcasing every single note. Enjoy! <laughs> sound examples and a fuller explanation of the dissonance curves and of the computational procedures can be found at the paper's website.